This conference will now be recorded. So good evening to one and all. Hope I am audible for you. So yeah, thank you, Shalini. So first of all, uh, we were dealing with the topic uh, microscopy last two classes. I can see few new new names in the role. I hope uh, all those new person they have already watched the YouTube channel last two classes because I will be continuing with the rest today. Fine. So in the last two classes of microscopy, we were basically uh, dealing with few terms and few factors or few facts in microscopy. We started with the basics of microscopy. What is the purpose of a microscope? What is the magnification power of normal light microscope, electron microscope? What is the source of light, light in a microscope? Both normal light microscope and electron microscope, even we discussed about the wavelength of li light, how it affects magnification, all those things we discussed. Then we discussed few terms, transmission, reflection, diffraction, absorption, fluorescence, then refraction, refractive index, then how the shape of the lens affects the magnification. Then what are all the various aberrations which may lead to uh, obser observation of an unclear image that is spherical aberration and chromatic aberration. Then about the types of lenses usually present in a microscope, ocular lens, objective lens, condenser lens. Then different types of uh, combo lenses used in microscopy, achromatic lens, apochromatic lens, flat field lens, then about the basic structure of a microscope, how it looks like, what are all the various important parts and their functions. Then further, uh, so that the, uh, till here we discussed in the first class, in the second class we started with magnification, about the different magnifications of a microscope, what is the minimum and maximum magnification power of an ocular lens, objective lens, how we are getting the total magnification of a light microscope, about the resolution, resolving power, how it is uh, related with the uh, wavelength and uh, numerical aperture, what is the, um, I mean, um, equation for the solving power, all those things. Also about the wavelength, how wavelength affects the magnification or resolution. Then about the numerical aperture, how a better numerical aperture can be obtained using uh, oil immersion objective lens. All those things we had discussed in the last class regarding the refractive index, uh, refractive index of air versus refractive index of immersion oil, fine. So why we are using immersion oil, what is the uh, function of immersion oil, how it will improve the uh, numerical aperture and thereby which it improves the resolving power, fine. And also about the term contrast. So till here, before going to the main class, till here, if there is any doubts anybody want to ask, you can do it now. Anything, any term you want me to explain once again or any any issues regarding the topics so far? Anybody? If it is clear for you, uh, please type a S in comment box so that I can, I will come to know if it is fine or if anybody wants to discuss any other uh, yeah, like terms or techniques, I can even go for that. Fine. So I hope it is clear for you. Uh, fine. Okay. Now, so today what we are going to do, now we are going to study about different types of light microscope. So in your, uh, in your syllabus already, I have uh, shown you the syllabus in the last two classes. In the unit 13, you have got a topic, RDNA technology and uh, related things. So in that, uh, this will come in part, I think F or G, microscopy. So in the microscopy, they have uh, given, you had to study about light microscope. You had to study about magnification power. You had to uh, study about microscopes, which we use to observe live microorganisms. Then also you had to study about microscopes. That is electron microscope, which is used to visualize internal cell structures and uh, viruses. Then about the staining techniques used in electron microscopy, all those things, which is, which comes in your syllabus. Fine. So today we will start with different types of light microscope clear so yes 
types of light microscope the first one we are going to study is about bright field microscope bright field microscope is nothing but the normal light microscope which we use in our laboratory the light source can be either sunlight that is the condenser lens is used to direct the sunlight in order to illuminate the object otherwise it will be having a visible light source at the bottom so we when we, it, it, it works in electrical power so similarly the normal microscope which is present in most of the laboratory even in our school lab or college lab all those things it, it all comes in bright field microscope for example this is the basic structure of a bright field microscope already i have discussed about this we will just see what are all the specialties of a bright field microscope so before going into bright field microscope first of all the choice of a microscope depends upon certain factors first of all nature of specimen then size of object degree of detail purpose etc nature of specimen means if we are going to observe light my uh, live microorganism we will use one type of microscope if we are going to observe unstained microorganism we will use another type of microscope if we are if we are going to observe stained microorganism we will use one type of microscope so all these things are your multiple choice question mcqs okay which microscope we are used to observe live microorganism they will give four options you have to write which microscope you are you can get a multiple choice question fine so it depends upon the nature of specimen then size of the object whether we are going to observe bacterial cell or fungal cell or even protozoa if we are going for virus we cannot select any of the light microscope we have to go for the electron microscope then degree of detail again if we are going to observe the whole cell we can go for light microscope but if we are going to observe the i mean um, uh, viruses or even internal cell structures of a bacterial cell we have to go for electron microscope purpose etc fine now for example certain microscopes used to view stained specimens already i told you certain used to view live microorganism certain depends upon fluorescent stains to observe specific microorganisms or structures so stained microbes can be observed unstained microorganisms can be observed live microorganisms can be observed then fluorescent uh, stained microorganisms can be observed so for each of these purpose we use different different types of light microscope clear so among the light microscope the first one and the most commonly used one is bright field microscope clear now but what are the characteristic features of bright field microscope it is the most common type of microscope already i told you it is present in most of the microbiology laboratories schools colleges research institutions everywhere they use the normal microscope which we use is a bright field or light microscope fine i mean a bright field microscope it's a type of light microscope now so then again you have to uh, remember what is a light microscope the illumination source will be either uv or visible light then we have also told about the uh, effect of color in the previous classes what is the effect of color if we are using blue light we can get a better resolution if we are so all those things must come to your mind when we talk about light microscope clear so bright field microscope is the common type of light microscope okay first first thing then it uses visible light with gior violet indigo blue green yellow orange red it uses visible light then require staining of specimen so that is one one important point bright field microscope is used to observe stained microorganisms or stained specimens or stained samples this is the microscope which we use fine now rarely used to observe live microorganisms so bright field microscope is very rarely used to observe live live microscope live microorganisms which means we have got some other type of microscope which is commonly used to observe live microorganism which we will learn in the coming classes fine so bright field microscope is rarely used to observe live microorganisms then what is the speciality of bright field how the name bright field came the specimen appears dark that is colored on a bright field that is background so in bright field microscope the specimen we, we have already discussed that bright field microscopes are used to observe stained specimens fine so bright field microscope in when we observe microorganism or when we observe a slide through bright field microscope the specimen or the microorganism the air dried heat fixed stained specimen will appear dark or colored 
but the field or the background will be bright in color full of light that's why we call these microscopes as bright field microscope field is bright and specimen is dark clear that is the that's how the name comes bright field microscope field is bright specimen is dark okay now what are all the parts of a bright field microscope already we have seen the structure of a microscope so you know it consists of a light source as i have already told you it could be either sunlight very basic type of microscope or it will be a source of visible light fine now a condenser lens to focus light on the specimen so condenser lens is used to focus the light on the specimen now two sets of lenses what are they already we discussed all these things objective lens which is near the stage or near the slide or near the specimen then ocular lens or eyepiece lens which through which we observe the microorganisms so two two sets of lenses are there objective lens is there and ocular lens is there objective lens is the lens which is present near the stage or near the specimen near the slide then ocular lens is the lens through which we observe the microorganism fine so two sets of lenses now what are the magnification power of these lenses ocular lens can be either 5x or 10x whereas objective lens can be 10x 40x and 100x then about 100x we had discussed yesterday that is nothing but oil immersion objective lens oil immersion objective lens is nothing but 100x we are using immersion oil together with 100x objective lens in order to get a higher magnification that is normally the maximum magnification of a light microscope will be how much can anybody answer in the comment box what is the maximum magnification which is available with a light microscope maximum magnification anybody can type in the comment box yes one answer came yeah 1000x yes shall ne correct 1000x 1000x is the maximum magnification why the maximum magnification possible with an ips lens is 10x ocular lens is nothing but ips lens that is 10x yes prema kumari thank you fine whereas the maximum magnification available by using an objective lens is 100x which means 100 into 10 you will get 1000x clear whereas when we are using oil immersion or when we are using immersion oil with 100x we can improve the magnification so can anybody type in the comment box what is the magnification obtained when we are using oil immersion objective lens anybody we have discussed it in the last class the maximum magnification very good very good shalini 1400x why because the refractive index of air is 1 whereas the refractive index of our uh, immersion oil is 1.4 so into 100 it will come 1400x fine so this already we have discussed all those things i am not going back to that clear so that is about the two types of lenses that is uh, objective lens and ocular lens or ips lens and objective lens ips lens can be either 5x or 10x the x i x determines how many times 5x means 5 times 10x means 10 times 1000x means 1000 times okay now next point the specimen focused with one objective lens remains in focus when switches to other objective lenses thus the microscope is said to be par focal in nature so what do you mean by par focal see when we are observing through the microscope what we are doing first of all we will mount the slide on the stage fine uh just a second okay when we are observing through the microscope what we will do we will mount the slide on this stage first we will use this uh, course adjustment here on the top we will use the course adjustment and we will just bring the stage near the objective lens first we will keep 10x objective then we will go for fine adjustment we will correct the vision so now we are getting a clear view of the slide then without changing course adjustment we will just go to the 40x directly we will use only fine adjustment there after observing through the 40x directly we will place a drop of oil we will go for 100x and we will use only the fine adjustment we will never touch the course adjustment once it is in focus once the slide is in focus with 10x objective lens for using 40x or 100x objective lens 
we never use the coarse adjustment we always use only the fine adjustment that property of a microscope is said to be par focal so lens will remains in focus when switches to other objective lenses thus the microscope is said to be par focal in nature fine then the next point oil immersion is used with 100x objective lens yes we know that and a typical resolution of around 200 nanometer we can obtain using light microscope clear that's all about the first type of light microscope bright field microscope this is the way how light travels in bright field microscope you can see the eye you can see the light source from the bottom passes to the condenser lens which will focus it on the specimen from the specimen it passes through the objective lens through the eyepiece lens and reaches the eye of the observer so that you are getting a image and the specimen or the microorganisms appears dark or stained and the background will be bright or light fine and this is one specimen how it appears in bright field microscope you can see the background is bright but the cells or the structures appears dark in color so that's all about normal light microscope nothing but bright field microscope before going into the next type of microscope let me know if anybody has any doubts in bright field microscope anybody any doubts in bright field microscope regarding its parts regarding its magnification power regarding the uh, travel of light anything if it is okay for you please type yes if you don't have any doubt and you have clearly understood light microscope or oh, i mean sorry bright field microscope that is the first type of light microscope please type yes in the chat box is it clear yes i got one answer maunia shalni yes do anybody have any doubts in uh, bright field microscope anybody priyama kumari thank you anybody any doubts in bright field microscope if because once you understand bright field microscope now the rest is all easy for you there will be some slight difference from the microscope that's all clear so with your consent i am going to the second type of light microscope dark field microscope so now so in the bright field so can you tell me what is the nature of specimen and background in dark field microscopy anybody type in the comment box now you know what is bright field microscope just tell me what is the nature of specimen or our microorganism in dark field microscopy also what about the background of dark field microscopy anybody type in the comment box anybody if you type this i can i will get some knowledge that or i can understand that you have, you know something about bright field microscopy anybody can you type in the comment box anybody so nobody knows what is the answer specimen is bright and background is dark so bright field microscopy field was bright that is the background was bright and the specimen was dark whereas here specimen is bright and background is dark thank you shalini correct answer so in the in the in the in the bright field microscopy what we told in the previous one see here we told in the bright field microscopy specimen appears dark or colored because it is stained specimen on a bright field or background which means the background of the microscope is bright whereas specimen is dark and even you have seen the picture fine you can see a clear background is it clear yes light colored background but you can see the specimen the structures are dark in color some some blue color or some black color something like that fine whereas when it comes to dark field microscopy the specimen dark field from the name itself you will get bright field means field is bright that is background is bright but specimen or microorganism is dark or stained whereas dark field means field is dark if the field is dark definitely the specimen or the microorganism will be bright fine so the second type of light microscope is dark field microscope now what are the characteristic features of dark field microscope we can go through that first one designed to eliminate staining to achieve contrast so here staining is not required to achieve contrast so we have told the term contrast what do you mean by contrast in order to identify 
the microorganism from the background we need to take we need to stain the microorganism fine otherwise it will appear as colorless with a colorless background you cannot identify the cell shape or cell arrangement or anything fine so that's why we are doing staining staining is performed in order to improve the contrast fine so here in dark field microscopy staining is not needed without staining that means dark field microscope can be used to observe unstained specimens in bright field microscopy already we have explained bright field microscope can be used to observe stained specimens whereas dark field microscope can be used to observe unstained specimens without staining okay that is the first point designed to eliminate staining to achieve contrast okay then why here the condenser lens has got a speciality so you know what is condenser lens it is the lens which will help the light to focus on the specimen fine so in dark field microscopy condenser lens does not permit direct transmission of light through the specimen into objective lens so that is the speciality here in bright field microscopy we saw from the light source to the condenser lens directly to the specimen whereas when it comes to dark field microscopy condenser lens does not permit direct transmission of light through the specimen into objective lens okay that is it is provided with a dark field ring or dark field stop that is the special feature of dark field microscopy dark field microscope is provided with a special structure or a special aid called dark field ring or dark field stop what is the speciality of this dark field ring or dark field stop it focuses light on the specimen at an oblique angle first of all oblique means tilted angle slider angle that is oblique angle in dark field microscopy the light is focused on the specimen at an oblique angle that is one thing then that the next point is the most important point in dark field microscopy only light that is reflected of the specimen will only enter the objective lens and seen so here in bright field microscopy you can clearly see the light source directly pass to the condenser lens directly pass to the objective lens whereas in dark field microscopy the light that is reflected of the specimen will only enter the objective lens and seen so you can see here condenser lens on the top you can see a dark field stop okay so the light passing through the specimen which is reflected from the specimen and there's the objective lens whereas you can see two arrows moving to the two sides it is nothing but unreflected or unrefracted light the unreflected or the unrefracted light or the light which is not reflected or refracted by the specimen will not enter in the objective lens in case of a dark field microscope because dark field microscope is provided with a special structure called dark field ring or dark field stop clear so it focus light on the specimen at an oblique angle angle then only light that is reflected of the specimen will enter the objective lens and seen okay then whereas light passing through the rest of the slide will not enter the objective lens so you can see light passing through the that is the unrefracted or unreflected light is passing outside the objective lens which is not entering the objective lens that means the amount of light which is entering into the objective lens will be very less that's why the field appears dark and the microorganisms appears very bright on a dark or black background clear so in dark field microscopy it is provided with a special structure called dark field ring or dark field stop also the condenser lens will not permit the direct transmission of light through the specimen into the objective lens first of all the light is focused on the specimen at an oblique angle or tilted angle also only the light which is reflected or refracted of the specimen will enter the objective lens and seen okay which means the light which is passing through the rest of the slide will never enter the objective field so that the field appears dark and the microorganisms appear very bright on a dark or black background you can see the picture you have a light source at the bottom you have got a dark field stop 
you have got a condenser lens. So the light which is reflected of the specimen directly enters into the objective lens, whereas the light which is not reflected or refracted by the specimen goes outside from the objective lens. The reflected light will enter into the eyepiece lens. As a result, the field appears dark, whereas the microorganisms appear very bright. See the picture. You can see the structures are very bright here, whereas the background is completely dark. Whereas in case of light microscopy, the background was completely light in the case of bright field microscopy, whereas the structures were dark. Here it is just the reverse. So two tests of light microscopes are over bright field microscope and dark field microscope. Let me have a post here. Anybody, any doubt from dark field microscope? So far, so good. If it is clear, please type yes in the comment box. Any doubt from dark field microscope? Anybody? Is it clear? Please let me know in the comment box. Is that clear? Dark field microscope? Yes. I can see the answers of Maunia, Prema Kumari. Yes, Shalini. I hope it is clear for all of you. Fine. So now we have completed two types of light microscope, bright field microscope and dark field microscope. We will complete one more today and then we will go to some question answer or MCQ section because already the organizers has informed us. Just do some MCQ at the end of each presentation. So from today onwards, we will start the process. OK, so we will go for one more type of uh, light microscope and let me see if I can complete the second one also. Because totally four types are there. Mainly I have uh, selected that is bright field microscope, dark field microscope, then fluorescent microscope and phase contrast. We will go to fluorescent microscope now. And then if time permits, we will complete uh, phase contrast. Otherwise, we will continue phase contrast and also the electron microscope in the coming classes. Fine. So we will go to th third type of light microscope now that is fluorescent microscope from the from the name itself you know what is this microscope all about fluorescent fluorescence we have studied the phenomenon of fluorescence so what was fluorescence anybody can you please type in the comment box what do you mean by fluorescence in the beginning i have explained each and every term that's why i explained in the beginning reflection refraction dispersion fluorescence refractive index everything i explain because i know when we start learning microscope all these terms will come and then you will get confused that's why illumination uh no prema Gumari, your answer is not clear illumination means all light will illuminate the object no what is the phenomenon of fluorescence anybody yeah absorbs light at a particular wavelength and emits light at a different wavelength. very good shalini that is what fluorescence is it absorbs light at a particular wavelength and emits light at a very different wavelength good good answer so we will go to fluorescence microscope now fine fluorescent microscopy fine now what is what is happening here now when a fluorescent dye is illuminated by light of one wavelength it gives off light at a different wavelength that is what fluorescence means fluorescence objects are those objects or fluorescent stains are those stains which will absorb light at a one wavelength if we are or if we are illuminating fluorescent objects with light of one wavelength it will provide light with a different wavelength so now the light which we use to illuminate is called light excitation wavelength light that is when fluorescent dye is illuminated by by light of one wavelength which is this wavelength is called excitation wavelength the wavelength which we use to illuminate the object is nothing but excitation wavelength whereas the wavelength of light which is provided by the fluorescent stain is called emission wavelength two types are there excitation wavelength emission wavelength excitation wavelength is nothing but the light of wavelength which we use to illuminate the fluorescent objects or fluorescent dyes whereas emission wavelength is nothing but the light provided by the fluorescent objects or fluorescent dyes clear so when fluorescent dye is illuminated by light of one wavelength, that is excitation wavelength, it provides or it gives off light at a different wavelength called emission wavelength. For example, one fluorescent dye, name of one fluorescent dye is 
fluorescein isothiocyanate. So what is happening for that? The difluorescein isothiocyanate, if illuminated with blue light, will emit green light. That is an example for a fluorescein dye. So example for a fluorescein dye is fluorescein, fluorescein isothiocyanate. So what is the peculiarity of this fluorescein dye? The difluorescein isothiocyanate, if we are illuminating with a blue light, will emit green light. So blue light is having one wavelength, which is nothing but excitation wavelength, whereas green light is with emission wavelength. Clear? Now, what is another, another uh, property of fluorescent microscope? These fluorescent dyes can be conjugated or linked with antibodies to identify specific microorganisms. And this technique is called immunofluorescence. So fluorescent microscopes are also used in the immunofluorescence microscopy. What do you mean by immunofluorescent microscopy? Certain fluorescent dyes can be conjugated or linked with antibodies to identify specific microorganisms. For example, if we want to identify whether there is a foodborne pathogen in a slide or in a mixed culture, what we will do? We will have antibodies which will bind specifically with the antigens of this pathogen. These antibodies we will select, will conjugate or linked with the fluorescent dye and then we will coat the slide so that this antibody will bind with the antigen and even if we will go for some washing step or something it will not be removed and it will provide fluorescence when we are observing in through a microscope clear that's what we call fluorescent microscope is also used in a specific phenomenon used for identification of certain microorganisms this technique is called immunofluorescence. Immuno means something related to antigen antibody reaction. Immuno, immunity. Fine. So, fluorescent dyes can also be conjugated or linked with antibodies to identify specific microorganisms, and this technique is called immunofluorescence. Clear? Now, what is the speciality of fluorescent microscope? Fluorescent microscopes are equipped, equipped with two types of filters. So two types of filters are provided in fluorescent microscope. What are they? They are emission filters. So we know what is emission filter and we know what is excite, uh, what is yeah, excitation filter and emission filter. First of all, fluorescent microscopes are equipped with excitation filters to permit the passage of wavelength to illuminate the object. So, you know what is excitation wavelength? That is the light with a wavelength to illuminate the object is nothing but excitation wavelength light. So here, excitation filter will permit the passage of light to illuminate the object. Whereas emission filter or barrier filter will only permit the entry of light in order to observe the specimen. Clear? That is the difference between excitation filter and emission filter. Fine. Fluorescent microscope is equipped with excitation filters to permit passage of wavelength to illuminate object. And barrier filter, emission filter is otherwise known as barrier filter, which will permit only emission wavelength to pass and prevent all other. So that is a safety feature of fluorescent microscope. Why? For example, if we are using UV range or UV light to excite as the excited light. For example, excited light must be of UV range. So that means we are using UV light to illuminate the object. Now, if the same light will pass through our eyes, what will happen? We will become blind, definitely. So that in case the excited light must be of UV range and the emitted light is visible range, the barrier filter or the emission filter will prevent blindness by blocking UV light from entering into the eyes. So that is the speciality of these two filters. Fine. So fluorescent microscopes are provided with two types of filters, excitation filter and emission filter or barrier filter. Excitation filter will only permit the passage of light, which is used to illuminate the object, whereas emission filter will only permit the passage of light with emission wavelength in order to observe the specimen. For example, if we are using UV light as the excitation light and if there is no barrier filter provided, 
definitely there is a possibility or chance that the uv light may enter our eyes and we may become blind in order to prevent this the microscope is provided with emission filter or barrier filter which will block all uv light if it is even accidentally there is a chance uv light because usually in case of fluorescent dyes it will if it is illuminated with uv light it will emit only visible light but in case by chance by accident if there is a chance uv light will come back to the eyes definitely this barrier filter will prevent the entry of this uv light into eyes clear finally there are two types of fluorescent microscope what are they transmitted fluorescence and epifluorescence transmitted in in case of transmitted fluorescence so there is a small difference in case of transmitted fluorescent microscope the excitation light that is the light which is used to, to illuminate the object is transmitted from below the specimen whereas in epifluorescent microscope the excitation light nothing but the light which is used to, to illuminate the object is provided from above the specimen through the objective lens so two types of fluorescent microscopes are there what are they transmitted fluorescent microscope and epifluorescent microscope what is the difference in case of transmitted fluorescent microscope the excitation light or the light which is used to, to illuminate the object is transmitted from below the specimen whereas in epifluorescent microscope the light which is used to, to illuminate the object that is the excitation light is provided from above the specimen through the objective lens clear that's all about fluorescent microscope you can see the picture so see here here you can see the light source in one side you have got an excitation filter you have got an emission filter and see excited light is coming into the sample and from the sample the emission light is only going into the ocular lens or eyepiece lens whereas no excitation excitation light is in the green color emission light is in the red color so no green color light is entering into the eyepiece lens in order to prevent any blindness and then you have got emission filter excitation filter objective lens sample light source then dichroic mirror nothing like an object like uh, our mirror which will uh, permit the passage of light fine then uh, filter cube emission filter then switchable mirror ccd camera this is all for uh, if you want to take any picture fine ocular lens or restore, restore all the same fine so this is the this is all about the fluorescent microscope and then see this is the picture of a fluorescent microscope field so you can see that fluorescent color it will be very colorful because we, uh, when we are uh, providing light with one wavelength fluorescent dyes will provide a and light with different wavelength different from the excited light it will be providing the emitted light fine so it will be very colorful the field will be very colorful in nature in case of fluorescent microscope fine yes uh, so that's all about fluorescent microscope so anybody till fluorescent microscope any doubts please comment in the chat box so three types of microscopes today we have learned we have learned about bright field microscope we have learned about dark field microscope and we have learned about fluorescent microscope now what is remaining the remaining one is phase contrast microscope better to we can go in the next class phase contrast microscope and all fine so after phase contrast microscope is over your first portion of this uh, unit is over that is light microscope is over then only the remaining topic is electron microscope clear so any doubts from a, these three microscopes anybody if it is clear for you all please type yes in the chat box yes anybody i got one uh, answer from prema kumari any more answers so who all are there the participants let me see uh, khan shaista lalti yadav all these are new names for me mauniya p new name prema kumari and shalini already they attended the last class rest all the names are new for me so please try to follow the classes either in youtube as far as you can please 
try to attend it on time online like this otherwise at least please go through the youtube fine so i hope this clear for you all so today just before going to stop the topic we are going for some mcqs multiple choice question just i have prepared five multiple choice questions for you from the last classes so once i read the question and explain the question you can just uh, type your answer in the comment box so i need all of you to participate in this and then we will discuss those question answers also coming saturday you will be having a test paper so during that time i will uh, i will apply few more questions in our uh, uh, telegram group as polls so from the poll please try to vote the your answer so that you will come to know the correct answer and if there is any explanation for that question i will add in the question itself fine so like this we will just develop our learning process clear so with your permission i am going to the mcqs so this is the first question for you today the minimum magnification power of a light microscope is dash 10x 15x 50x 100x please poll your answers in the chat box once you poll your answers all of you i need all of you to poll your answers six members all of you all of you have to poll your answers then only i will explain the answer so how many participants are there today khan lalti maunia priyama shalini five answers i need five answers in the chat box lalti adav 10x shalini 10x maunia 10x then priyama kumari 100x one more answer i need one more answer one more answer who is that who has not answered uh i think it is uh, khan khan shaista i need your answer is he online khan shaista lalti yadav you type 10x shalini 10x maunia 10x prema kumari 100x okay let me explain the question now fine okay so what is the question here see when you do mcq i can give you some tips now what i used to do and even i have read in some books i have got some information from the training whenever you do multiple choice question first of all you have to identify the keywords of the question keywords of the question keyword every question will carry some keywords so can anybody type in the chat box what is the keyword of this question the minimum magnification power of a light microscope is dash what are the keywords type in the chat box all of you what comes to your mind just type in the chat box what the, what is the keyword minimum magnification okay shalini good minimum minimum magnification power is one keyword then that's all minimum magnification okay fine okay i agree with you shalini so the keyword is minimum magnification power so the minimum magnification power of a light microscope first of all tell me what is the, what do you mean by magnification power of a light microscope magnification power of a light microscope is anybody can you answer in the chat box what do you mean by magnification power of a light microscope anybody please type in the chat box what do you mean by magnification power of a microscope which means you you have not understood my last class yes what do you mean by magnification power of a microscope okay i will explain it just now itself right from the slide can you see this slide all of you all of you can you see see this slide magnification if you can yeah yes sir okay now let me explain the term magnification first of all magnification enlargement of image of an object that is magnification now compound light microscope nothing but our light microscope uses multiple lenses to refract light to achieve this okay it uses two convex convex lenses an ocular lens that is eyepiece lens and an objective lens now i have asked you the question what is the magnification minimum magnification power of a light microscope read the next sentence yeah enlarged size of specimen that is nothing but magnification prema kumar yes just read the next sentence total magnification is the product of magnifying power of 
individual lenses that is product of magnifying power of ocular lens maximum 10x and objective lens maximum 100x that is overall magnification of 1000x which means what was my question my question was minimum magnification power of light microscope that was my question clear minimum magnification power of light microscope so if my question was the maximum magnification power of a light microscope is dash what was your answer answer is not there in the so if my question was the max maximum magnification power of a light microscope is dash what was very good shalini 1000x because the maximum magnification power of eyepiece lens is 10x and the maximum magnification power of objective lens is 100x so it will be 1000x and if we are using oil immersion it will go up to very good shalini minimum is 50x from where you get this answer where you get this answer 50x now you got the correct answer yes 50x is the correct answer why okay the magnification power of a light microscope is what it is the product of the magnifying power of eyepiece lens and objective lens which means see bright field microscope you have the ocular lens or eyepiece lens 5x and 10x objective lens you have three types 10 40 or 100x i asked you minimum magnification power which means the minimum magnification of eyepiece lens is 5x into minimum magnification of objective lens is 10x you will get 5 into 10 answer is 50x is there anyone who is not clear with this answer anybody please 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 tell me in the comment box anybody who has not got 50x as the answer please type in the comment box please i have asked you the question the minimum magnification power of a light microscope which means magnification power is the product of eyepiece lens into objective lens that is ocular lens into objective lens the minimum magnification of eyepiece lens is 5x and the maximum is 10x whereas the minimum magnification of objective lens is 10x and the maximum is 100x so minimum of eyepiece lens 5x into minimum of objective lens 10x so 5 into 10 50x is this clear if it is clear please type yes in the comment box if it is clear only type yes if it is clear for you yes 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 very good so this is the way you have to answer a multiple choice question any multiple choice question you have to find out the keyword what is the keyword here minimum magnification power so you go for very minimum don't go for maximum don't go for medium only look in the minimum minimum of eyepiece lens 5x minimum of objective lens 10x 5 into 10 50x direct question this is not a confusing question you won't get such a direct question in your exam you will get definitely confusing question more than one answer will look alike then you have to find the right answer clear so that's all about the first question now we will pass on to the second question yes second question resolving power of a microscope depends on dash there also there is some instruction in the question you can select more than one option so you can select more than one maybe a b c d you can select a b c you can select a and b you can select a and c you can select b and c you can select c and d you can select you can select more than one option you can select you can select more than one option it's up to you to select whether you select or not select give me the answer in comment box resolving power of a microscope depends on dash option b and d shall be option b is numerical aperture option d is color of light okay good okay priyama kumari you select a b and d good very good a is intensity of light b is numerical aperture and d is color of light very good any any more answers i need two more answer maunia and lalti yadav this is based on my last class actually direct question very direct question nothing confusing direct question i have written the same in my slides if you have gone through my slide it is very easy yeah lalti yadav a and b 
intensity of light and numerical aperture okay maunia a b and d fine all the answers are wrong all the answers are wrong so let me explain your question was resolving power of a microscope depends on dash what are they you can select more than one option i did not tell you to select more than one option i did not tell you to select more than one option i write there you can select more than one option if you want if you feel more than one option is right you can select it because i told like that you selected more than one some of you selected a b d some of you selected a and b now let me go to the slide where the answer is resolving power of a microscope depends upon dash straight question yes next slide yeah resolving hope you can see this yeah prema kumari you got the answer now b before you selected a b d now you selected b why 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 is it so why okay see the resolution resolving power uh, resolution degree to which detail can be seen resolving power close facing all those things and come come here resolving power of a microscope depends on wavelength of light lambda and a property of objective lens called numerical aperture so resolving power only depends upon two factors wavelength of light lambda and numerical aperture that is na so what was my question now we will go to the question yes 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 prema kumari wavelength and numerical aperture my question was resolving power of a microscope depends on dash you can select more than one option i don't wanted you i have not written there okay it is mandatory to select more than one so what was the keyword here what was the keyword here resolving power of a microscope then the instruction was also a keyword for you you can select you must select more than one option you have to select more than one option here you can select if you want you can select if you don't want don't select so the answer is b numerical aperture it does not depends upon the intensity of light it does not depends upon magnifying power it does not depends upon color of light but yes the solving power of a microscope depends upon wavelength of light that is lambda and numerical aperture is this question clear for all if it is clear please type yes in the comment box if it is clear for you yes lalti yadav yes maunia so so it is it is clear for four of you i hope and i will pass to the next question this is the third question another direct question as the wavelength of light increases numerical aperture dash a increases b decreases c remains the same d none of the above i need the answer in comment box i need the answer in comment box numerical aperture depends upon as the wavelength of light increases numerical aperture dash yes see the see the keywords there just think what happens what is the relation between wavelength of light and numerical aperture what is the relation between wavelength of light numerical aperture and magnification prema kumari b decreases prema kumari has given the answer i need three more answers shalini mauniya lalti yadav lalti yadav a increases two more answers i am waiting from shalini and mauniya shalini as decreases that means b okay okay mauniya only you are left mauniya give me the answer only from your side i want to get it decreases okay so this question three of you have made it correct b is the correct answer why what happened lalti yadav we will go to the respective slide c wavelength the shorter the wavelength the greater the value of numerical aperture in the beginning itself i have given that means as the wavelength decreases numerical aperture increases as the wavelength decreases numerical aperture increases and what was our question 
so as the wavelength decreases numerical aperture increases which means as the wavelength increases numerical aperture definitely decreases right straight answer both are are reciprocal to each other very good very good very good so is it clear for all of you yes i hope it is clear for all of you as the wavelength of light decreases numerical aperture increases which means as the wavelength of light increases numerical aperture decreases straight question and the second last question for today a better resolution can be obtained using dash light uv red blue white i need the answers in chat box a better resolution can be obtained using dash light a uv light b red light c blue light d white light yes shalini very fast answer blue light any more answers blue light maunia two more answers i need from prema kumari blue one more answer from lalti yadav definitely he will go for blue it seems because all other three answers are blue i don't think he will go for another answer yes lalti yadav what is your answer uv okay good because i told you you, you selected uv right great okay maunia just let me know why you selected blue color blue can you give me the explanation maunia i need the explanation from you why you selected blue why you told me a better resolution can be obtained using dash light you told me blue light why maunia give me the answer type in the comment box or even you can unmute and talk using the microphone come on why you tell me blue color maunia are you there or shall i pass the question because shalini told blue i also told blue then prema kumari also told blue is it like that yeah blue can give high wavelength is it is it high wavelength is that the answer just now i explained you just now i explained you see here the shorter the wavelength the greater the value of numerical aperture so blue light is having a low wavelength yes yes shalini the shorter the wavelength the greater the value for numerical aperture the better the resolution so finer structure can be viewed which means blue light around 480 nanometer has a shorter wavelength than most of the others red light uv uv is between 100 to 400 red light is 680 even blue light yeah that's okay that's fine so greater resolution with a blue light source blue filter over white light source so then there is a confusion there is a confusion for the answer because the shorter the wavelength the greater the value for numerical aperture fine the better is the resolving power so i think that uv is not a correct option there i think i have i have not given a correct option as uv because i have to give you the colors as option so uh, lalti yadav you have selected uv but that option itself is not correct so please excuse me for that we will compare with these three red light blue light and white light so red is having 680 nanometer white is also greater than, uh, near or greater than blue light so here the answer will be blue light because blue light is having a lesser wavelength as the wavelength decreases numerical aperture increases what is numerical aperture the amount of light which is entering into the which is entering into the lens that is nothing but your numerical aperture so the shorter the wavelength the greater the value for numerical aperture which means as the wavelength of the light decreases more light enters into the lens so the resolving power will be better so fine structures can be seen okay which means blue light that's why it is given the last sentence hence greater resolution with blue light source that is we can use even a blue filter over white light source greater resolution with blue light source or blue filter over white light source clear so we are not considering uv as an option there we will go with the other three options blue red and white so among them blue is the correct answer and the last question for today oil immersion objective provides a better resolution 
due to an improved dash oil immersion objective provides a better resolution due to an improved dash option a magnification option b refractive index value option c diffraction and option d dispersion value yes b refractive index value shalini your answer has already came good but correct or not correct i don't know more answers three more answers i need oil immersion objective provides a better resolution due to an improved dash a magnification b refractive index value c diffraction d dispersion value any more answers <coughs> Yes, Shalini has given the answer B. Prema Kumari given the answer A. That is magnification. Maunia given the answer. Okay, Shalini has also changed their her answer. Magnification. Okay, so Shalini has gone for magnification. Prema Kumari has gone for magnification. Maunia has gone for magnification, and Lalti Yadav has gone for dispersion value. Thank you. All the answers are wrong. I am sorry. So what is the question here? Oil immersion objective provides a better resolution due to an improved dash. Improved dash. So there is some factor or a better value for a factor which will provide a better resolution for oil immersion objective. We will go to the answer. We will go to oil immersion. Last topic. Yeah. Oil immersion, no, the previous one. Okay, see, you can see here. Now, if air has a refractive index of one, which limits the resolution. So, what is the refractive index? Refractive index is nothing but the speed of light in a given medium to speed of light in vacuum. So, air has got a refractive index of one, which limits the resolution because air is what which fills between the objective lens and the slide. So but numerical aperture can be increased by per placing immersion oil between the specimen and objective lens to improve resolving power. So instead of air, so usually if we are if we are using 100x objective and if we are not using immersion oil, air will fill the space between the I can show you the picture first of all, and then I will explain. See, this is the picture of microscope. This is the space between the specimen and the objective lens so this is the space this space is usually filled with air but if we are using immersion oil oil will fill this space between the objective lens and the slide or the specimen clear so air has a refractive index of one which limits the resolution but numerical aperture can be increased by placing Immersion oil between the specimen and the objective lens to improve the solving power. That is, numerical aperture affects magnification. Available magnification is 1000 times numerical aperture being used. Possible with an oil immersion lens with refractive index of 1.4 to achieve a magnification of approximately 1400x, which means air is having a refractive index of one so using air the maximum magnification possible is 1000x whereas when we are using an immersion oil with refractive index of 1.4 instead of 1000x magnification we can achieve a magnification of 1400x i think in my last slide i have made some mistake here instead of refractive index I have written NA, numerical aperture here. That is wrong. It is refractive index. Okay. Air is having a refractive index of 1, which will provide a magnification of 1000x. That is 1000 times the image of an object. Whereas, if we are using immersion oil with 100x objective, that is oil immersion lens, it will have a refractive index of 1.4, which will provide a magnification of 
1400 x that is 1400 times the image of the object instead of our 1000 x or 1000 times now tell me the answer for this oil immersion objective provides a better resolution due to an improved dash give me the answer give me the answer in chat box b refractive index value very good so shalini you have made it clear first then you got confused and you have made it incorrect that's why in the beginning i told you all whenever you are doing an mcq or multiple choice question just go to the keywords oil immersion objective provides a better resolution due to an improved dash so improved dash is the keyword here improved dash means there is something improved when we are using oil immersion objective it is nothing but refractive index value because air one refractive index value going to 1000x oil immersion objective 1.4 refractive index value going to 1400x magnification clear and usually when we are doing mcq this is a tip for especially for shalini today also for all of you when we read a question the first answer which will come to our mind there is a possibility that it will be the right answer why is it so that must be studied by us in the past or read by us in the past which is there in our subconscious mind which suddenly comes to mind which suddenly comes to our conscious mind this is actually based on an article it is based on a scientific article it is not correct always maybe sometimes wrong answer will also come suddenly to your mind in order to confuse you but as per studies as per research has happened in the past the first answer which comes to your mind there is a possibility that it may be correct because that portion or that area might have been studied by a human in the past which is there in our subconscious mind which suddenly hits our conscious mind so always not always uh mostly you can believe your instincts okay just believe your instincts read the question thoroughly find out the what is that keyword and then go with your answer clear so with this last mcq today's class comes to an end we will continue the rest in the next class fine i will give you more multiple choice questions including these questions on saturday based on the topics which we have covered today over to the organizers please thank you okay sir so dear students if you have any doubts regarding today's session already sir has cleared your doubts but even though if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section regarding today's session yeah either you please ask me in the comment section or if you have if you are reluctant okay we cannot ask you i have my mail id here i have my personal whatsapp number here in the last class i think jancy there was one student jancy she had some doubt i already explained her in the class and then even she uh, contacted me in uh, email even in my whatsapp then i explained and now i hope it is clear for her so if you have any doubts please you have many ways to clear you can ask in the class you can personally contact me fine but please don't keep doubts in your mind mind please don't keep it clear clear your doubts then and there and proceed further okay yes yeah so, that's it from my side yeah continue yeah yes yeah, sir so if you have understood everything regarding today's session you can just type yes in the comment section just let us know okay thank you for responding so guys that's all for today's class i hope you all enjoyed and i would like to request organizers to put the feed